for joining us we here for another time in the word of god and in the anointing of christ here at increasing faith deliverance ministry international i'm apostle richard fagan here to declare the gospel of christ to you today and to share the word of faith and of power that will bring about the life of god the joy of the lord in your life that's what it's all about amen and this glorious day I call it good friday praise god it is a good friday hallelujah and uh, they have a saying thank god it's friday because it's payday hallelujah but i can tell you that sinners would not think of it a good friday if payday came hallelujah because the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ and that's what he did in this day that has been commemorated for the death and the burial and the resurrection of Christ. We are here to declare joy to the whole earth. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We want to start with this word here in Philippians chapter 2. It says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any af affection and mercy, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambitions or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others let this mind be in you which also is in christ jesus who being in the form of god did not consider it robbery to be equal with god but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus hallelujah every knee should bow and those in heaven and those of the earth and those under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Hallelujah. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world holding fast the word of life so that you may rejoice in a day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. Praise God. You also be glad and rejoice with me. He's speaking about the spirit of humility. That's a principle in the kingdom that promotion comes when humility is demonstrated it says anyone who humbles themselves shall be exalted and those who exalt themselves shall be abased or put down put to shame and so the lord is calling for us to understand this principle that what christ did was not a thing to show off himself show off his power show off how great he is no it, it says really is to humble himself what he did was really for us hallelujah he didn't do it for himself to get self-praise but the word of god says that god has highly exalted him because of it 
He didn't exalt himself because of it. Sometimes people do things to be seen of men for self praise, hello, and self glorification. But the motives must align with the kingdom of God. That is for souls to be saved. Hello, the name of the Lord to be magnified. That the Spirit of God be demonstrated through your life in the earth. God wants that and He wants you to really demonstrate that even now, not just sit by as a fan and rejoice that Christ died for you, but He says, in like manner, you also be willing to lay down your life for the brethren. Amen. And that's what we are called to do. He says, as Christ laid down his life for you, so ought you to lay down your life for your brethren. Amen. And so it's talking about self-denial. Praise God. And understanding the need for you to walk in worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to pray and acknowledge the Lord. You know, it means we know he's here. Come on, lift those hands. You there that are watching, just lift your hands where we are and just trust the Lord right now. Talk to him, open your mouth and speak to him right now. He wants to hear you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we just honor you for another day, another opportunity to come before you and lifting up holy hands, celebrating the great demonstration of your love towards us. Hallelujah. Even if you didn't do it, you would still be a God of love. But we on our own sins, hallelujah, by our own choice of coming to this position of sin. And you demonstrated love, not because you have to, but you chose to demonstrate that love. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he gave himself for us. That we would know, Lord God, to walk in obedience and truth before you and to love others even as you loved us. And so we pray that today love will cover a multitude of sin. That love will raise us up to a new level, oh God, of obedience. For so you said, if we love you, keep your commandments. Oh yes, so our love is demonstrated through our obedience. And I thank you, God, that you're teaching us, hallelujah, to love, not as the world love, but as you have loved us, hallelujah. And we know the way you have loved us, put a demand upon us to step out in love and in obedience to you that will show the world, hallelujah, that you are truly God, you are truly Lord, you are worthy of all the praise and the glory and every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord you deserve it Lord hallelujah for all that you have embraced and suffered for us you were wounded for our transgression you were bruised for our iniquity the chastisement for peace was placed upon you and by your stripes you are healed Healing has been released to us. That our position could change. Our sick condition could have left us. And we could enjoy divine health in you. Hallelujah. And we know we are made whole in Christ. For you said if any man be in Christ. He is a new creation. All things are passed away. And behold all things are become new. We exercise faith in your word today. And declare it is well as your word declares it so it is hallelujah and we are not sitting by in woe and in fear anymore because you have delivered us from the bondage of fear and from the spirit of fear hallelujah your perfect love dissolves of fear hallelujah you declare in your word hallelujah that you have not given us a spirit of fear but of love and power and of sound mind hallelujah and we are we are confident in your presence we do as the word declare come boldly to your throne hallelujah knowing that we will our petitions will be heard and that you will find we will find help and grace in the time of need hallelujah and it's working together all things for good right now all things are working together despite what the devil is doing despite what he's trying and what he's sending and hurling at us you have declared us victorious 
Hallelujah. We refuse to accept defeat or, or cringe before the enemy. Hallelujah. And fear of what he can do or what man can do. Because you are our refuge and our strength. A very present help in the time of trouble so we don't fear what man can do we know you have declared that with you all things are possible and our possibilities are endless hallelujah it is limitless because you have granted us such great love even while we are in sin how much more will you do for us now that we have been saved from those sins Hallelujah. And so we are we are expecting great and marvelous things. We are not looking for gloom and doom. Because we believe in you. Hallelujah. And you said those who don't believe in your son. They are already condemned. But those who believe. The same shall be said. Hallelujah. Uh, the grace is working for us. It's not working against us. It's working for us. Hallelujah. And perfecting and bringing things in order as you have ordained beforehand that it should be. Hallelujah. And we walk by faith and not by sight. We declare this is the year of victory. This is the year of harvest. This is the year of breakthrough for your people, oh God. A year of miracles upon miracles. And we refuse to back down by the signs of the time. And we are looking to you, the author, and the finisher of our faith to turn it around. Hallelujah. Cause what the enemy meant for evil to turn around for good. We are looking for those opportunities. That you have graced us with in Christ because you said you have provided every spiritual blessing that we need in spiritual places in Christ Jesus. And by faith we activate every one of them. Hallelujah. In our lives and give you the glory. Hallelujah. And say this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Let the weak say that I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the sick say I am healed. Let those that are oppressed know that there is hope in the Lord. Hallelujah. Let your anointing destroy every yoke now, Lord. And lift every burden. Let souls be saved. Bodies be healed. Minds be renewed. And spirit man be built up. In Jesus' name, come on, give him the glory and the praise that he deserves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I welcome the praise and worship team as they come to lead you in worship. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord the praise. Hallelujah. Continue to lift the name of Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. You are worthy, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We worship you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. There's nothing worth more. That could ever come close Nothing can compare Your living love Your presence Your presence Lord I've tasted Thank you Lord I've tasted and seen Of the sweet Shame is undone. Your presence, your presence, Lord. Lift your hands in the place and worship with me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come fill this place and fill the atmosphere. 
It's all about It's all about you, Lord It's always been From my heart To the heavens Jesus be the center It's all about you This is all From my heart From my heart To the heavens Jesus be the center
that. We give praise in that. Because victory belongs to us already. Thank you, God.
victory, saints of God. Hallelujah. We don't move by sight. We move by faith. That's our currency in the kingdom. So you got to know where you're from. You got to know who is your Lord.
can still hear Jesus crying out from the tree. The statement of victory. It is finished. Ah, somebody don't know what I got. Anybody believe it today? 
Oh, come on. Give God the praise. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. The devil wants many to forget it. Many fear the name of Corona and dread its name more than the name of Jesus. But I want you to know that Corona is just another footstool under Jesus' feet. Praise God. Because in Christ we got the victory. I say in Christ we got the victory. Not just over Corona, but over death itself. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God has given us the victory and demonstrated that through Jesus Christ. And Paul made a statement that we know that the grave was not able. Death was not able to hold him. Hallelujah. Because he's that eternal life. And he came that we might have life. And have it more abundantly. Come on somebody. And we got to speak about that life. We're not here to speak about death. The only reference we have to death is his failure in accomplishing his final sentence on us. Because we have victory over death through Jesus Christ. And Paul declared that we have victory in him. Hello somebody. And we got to know that being born again. And I'm talking to the saints today. That already know and have received the gospel of Christ. And have already received Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Have been blood washed in the blood of the Lamb. And have been filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to know that you got victory. Ah, there is power in the name of Jesus. I believe somebody in the room know what I'm talking about. And when you know you need to have an answer. You need to have a reply. You need to have a respond. Because faith is not mute. Faith is not dumb. Paul said, because I believe, I speak. Hallelujah. Because faith de demands a response. Hallelujah. A woman came to Jesus and her daughter was sick, a Syrophoenician woman. And she came to him and the Lord said, hey, healing is the children's bread. It's not good for me to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. But the woman said, surely, master, it's true. She didn't deny it. You what belong to the insiders or for the insiders. It's not right to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. Hallelujah. But the woman said, but even the crumbs that fall from the master's table goes to the dog. Hallelujah. It means that the overflow of what is inside flows to those who are outside. My God, my God, my God. And Jesus said, woman, great is your faith. Go, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made your daughter whole. This woman had persistent faith. Uh, she didn't have some thin skin faith that some people have today. As they hear some word, they get offended. As they get some correction, they get sidetracked. But Jesus was on fire with what he was saying, with what God was telling him to say. And this woman believed that God was speaking through Jesus. And that's why when she, he said, I shouldn't take the children's bread and give it to dogs, she wasn't offended. She knew the proverb that you shouldn't take the children's bread and give it to strangers. Give it to outsiders. The children must eat first. It's the very reason why the Lord told his disciples they should first minister amongst the Jews and not go amongst the Gentiles. He said it's first to those who are in covenant with him. Then to those who are not. But there's a first. There's a priority. The word of God says do good to all men. 
but he says do good especially to those of the household of faith there is an especially nowadays everybody treats everything the same everything is common they don't regard some things they don't give double honor to nothing everybody is the same so everybody must get same treatment no difference no matter what they do but it is not true that doesn't play out in society when a man breaks the law and he's arrested he's not treated like the man who keeps the law if he's treated if the man who is keeping the law is treated the same way as the man who breaks it then there's injustice and we wouldn't say because they should be treated the same because we are all equal they should be treated the same we got to understand the conditions that demand certain treatment Lord Jesus and we, and we got to know who to honor and who not to honor we got to know what to give praise to and what not to give praise to what to be thankful for and what not to be thankful for uh, you got to understand some person said you know the word of God says in everything give thanks so they said ah, that means I must thank him for everything but that's not what it means it says in everything he didn't say for everything because everything that comes your way doesn't come from him there is an enemy there is an adversary called Satan the devil that goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and we are called to know the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth Jesus spoke a parable about the kingdom of God and spoke about a man who had a field and he planted good seeds in the field but while his servant slept they woke up and found that when the seeds were springing up, there were tears springing up amongst them. And they said, Master, we know that you sow good seed. Where did these come from? And the Lord didn't say, oh, it's me, do it too. Because anything happens is me. That's how some people treat it. Anything happens is God. Come on now. And they ran in error. Of blaming God for things that he did not do come on somebody but we want you to know the truth and Jesus said the man said to that those servants he said an enemy the enemy has done this come on somebody there is an enemy whether you want to recognize it or not Either you want to say, oh, you just treat everybody the same. You make no distinction. Hello, somebody. I want you to know that even when Jesus said to his disciples that some of you will not die before you see the Son of Man coming into his glory in his kingdom. I'm telling you that all the disciples did not see it. Though they were his disciples. The word of God says he called Peter, James and John. Judas was not amongst them. Though he was one of the disciples. And, and Judas, though he posed as a friend, was an enemy. The Lord don't show enemy everything. Lord Jesus. Lord, somebody need to get this today. I said the Lord don't show the enemy everything. But he says, I reveal all things to you because you are my friends. Come on. Come on, for he says, the master doesn't know. The servant doesn't know what the master is doing. But he says, I call you friends because all the father has revealed to me. I reveal it to you. Come on, somebody. And he don't call everybody his friends. He says, you are my friend if you do what I command you. Come on, somebody. That means friendship with Jesus demands obedience. Hallelujah. He's not leading you wrong like some friends will. And he's discipling people for the kingdom of God. He's discipling people to become sons and daughters of the true and living God. And so there's a certain character. There's a certain qualification for that entry. And he said to Nicodemus, you must be what? 
born again john 3 verse 3 and 5 he says you got to be born of the spirit and born of the water hallelujah he says you must be born again except man is born again he cannot enter the kingdom of god hello somebody born of the water and of the spirit he cannot what enter the kingdom of god that is a requirement to enter come on now somebody so if god is saying i'm treating everybody the same then how is some ain't allowed to enter and some are not allowed to enter come on we know that god loves everybody the same but the conditions of the operation hallelujah their conduct will determine access or denial my god i want to talk to somebody today i said their conduct will determine what access or denial and he says you must be born of the water and of the spirit you must be born again this is not an earthly physical birth this is a heavenly spiritual birth hallelujah this is not done by the flesh of man nor by the will of man nor by blood of man but it's by the will of god god will you to become a son god will you to become a daughter and if he says to become it is not from the point of your creation or procreation from your parents because he says to become if you came into existence as a child you don't need nothing to become a child you're already a child but he said in saint john 1 verse 11 and 12 to as many as received him what you say to them he gave right or power to become children of god come on now to those who what believe in his name now we know many don't believe in his name we know many don't receive him uh, they say some white man doctrine and some will come and tell you you know you need to know your roots my roots don't go into skin my dear my roots go in christ it's not in skin color and it's not in ear quality all those descriptions is of my body and i am not my body i live in a body and i possess a soul but i'm not a body oh you can put this body in the grave when it die but you can't put my spirit in the grave lord jesus because paul says to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord because the body was taken from the earth but the spirit wasn't taken from the earth the spirit god breathed it came from god himself hallelujah we had the word of god said this genesis 2 verse what 7 hallelujah where the word of god says and god formed man from the dust and he breathed into his nostril he what breathed, breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living being in other words his body was formed from the earth but the body being formed from the earth was not alive until spirit was put in it amen spirit was what was put in it not just ear it wasn't wind all the wind won't blow with all the dead people in the mall they're not getting alive it not, it's not just ear it's not breeze that blow and the man come alive it is spirit that is placed in the body come on somebody and when spirit is placed in the body it comes alive because the life of the body is from the spirit
come on somebody so the lord formed man it said it formed him it's talking about his body he wear he formed it from the dust hallelujah and when man sinned the spiritual life was dead that's why the Lord said to him, in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. But man didn't die in that day physically. His body was still alive. But his spirit in that body had no disconnect from the source of the life stream. And just like you cut off a branch from the moment you sever the branch from that tree, it starts to die. If it's not reconnected to a life source, it just completely sheds away. Come on now. The same way from man's sin, he was separated from God. He was what? Separated from God. And sin separates you from God. Come on now. This is the gospel we preach. Sin separates you from God. God, is, God loves you though you have sinned. But make no dis make mistake about it. God doesn't love sin. He hated it in the beginning. And he still hates it now. And you committing sin. The things that God hates. Is provoking the anger. And the wrath of God. But God has made one to stand. As a mediator. Between man and God. One Christ Jesus who is presented as a lamb to pay for the sins of man and to reconcile man again with God. And this same Jesus became our high priest who offered not blood of rams for us but offered his own blood for us. He became our high priest who was perfect. Because the high priests under the old covenant, they sinned and the people sinned. And they offered blood sacrifice for their sin and for the sins of the people. But Jesus did not sin. He was tempted in all ways. Yet without sin. This is a perfect high priest. This is the first of his kind from the time Adam sinned. Hello somebody. And that's why the word of God said the first man, the first Adam, come on now. The first man, Adam, was a living being. But the last one <laughs> was a life-giving spirit. Come on now. That's 1 Corinthians what? 50. Hallelujah. 15 verse 45. Mm. Praise God. So we want you to understand that God wants you to come into the understanding of the being you were before. And the being is offering you to be now. It's not the same being. Lord Jesus. Ah, oh, somebody need to hear this today. Jesus didn't just die for you to get teary eyed today. And think about how he suffered and how he bled and how he died and how they spat on him and my God, how they ridiculed him and how they scuffed him and flogged him and tore his flesh and pierced his hands and his feet and we just rock on each other and whoa, oh Jesus, whoa, ah. He says, death have been swallowed up in victory. Come on, somebody. Because the grave could not hold him. Ah, he said, it is impossible. It is what? Impossible for the grave to hold him. For death to hold him. Because he says, it is not someone coming and taking my life. It is I who lay it down. Come on, he said that in St. John 10. It's I who lay it down and it's I who have the power to take it up back again. Come on, somebody. He said, the Father gave me this command. No man take my life. But I lay down and I who lay it down have the power to take it up back again. 
My God, that don't sound like somebody who debt is controlling. Hallelujah. And he's just the first of his kind. Uh, not the only of his kind. Woo! He's the what? The first of his kind. I, I don't know if anybody hearing me today, but you got to focus on this word right now. Get all your distraction out of the way and get your mind locked into the word. Come on, somebody. Because it's the word that will save you, heal you, and deliver you, and give you spiritual food for your soul. Hallelujah. He said, how oh, can a young man cleanse his ways except by the what? The washing of the water of the word. The word of God cleanses you. And the Lord said to his disciples, you have been sanctified through the word that I have spoken unto you. The word sanctifies. The word heals. He says, he, he sent his word and healed our diseases. Come on. The word brings life. He says we don't live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds. Out of the mouth of God. Hello somebody. You got to desire the word. We can't make you desire the word. You can hang around it all you want. Look churchy all you want. But if you have no desire for this. Dog yam your supper. If you have no desire for this. The devil already win. You are already under a loser. Because really, Satan is not a winner. He's already condemned and doomed. And those who fall under him suffer the same fate. But we are calling you to a higher realm. This is a divine call from the Lord. For you to hear today. And to know victory has been won in Christ Jesus. Come on somebody give him the glory. Now we're not here to make you feel good. We are not here to tell you something like we're starting a cheering team. We are here to declare truth. And truth sets you free. My God. But what does truth set you free from? Oh my God. It set you free from lies. The devil is the father of lies. You see, the devil didn't make man sin. I want to talk to somebody here. The devil didn't make man sin. All the devil did was to tame man and to tell him some lies that opposes what God said. And he chose who to believe. The devil don't make you sin. Oh, Jesus. The devil just give you some other options. Hallelujah. And you choose. Come on now. And because of sin working in your body, working in your flesh, there's something they call sinful nature. That the word of God says, because one man sinned, all sinned. Glory to God. Then that sinful nature is working as a law of sin and death in you. Because Adam entered into that sin before he reproduced after his kind, everybody after his kind came corrupt. Come on, somebody. Because the Lord told him to multiply and be fruitful. But he didn't have a child until after he sinned. He could have had them before. Then there'll be some righteous seed in the land. But being that he sinned, come on somebody. Being that what? He sinned. Before he reproduced, the source from which the seeds were coming was already corrupt. So the seeds coming, coming through a corrupt source is already corrupt. And as the word of God says in Romans 5 verse 12, Therefore just as through one man sin, sin entered the world, and death through sin, huh? and thus death spread 
to all men because what all sinned for until a law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed where there is no law come on somebody in other words sin was always there from Adam's sin and the law coming hundreds thousands of years later confirm how sinful sin had become in the lives of men men heart wax worse and worse and they become more and more evil as the days go by because sin produces more sin come on it's a deadly disease that keeps eating and eating until there's nothing left come on but God made a cure for it hallelujah I say God made a cure for it so he, he said it is good to identify the problem but the God we serve doesn't just look at the problem but he produces solution and when the Lord made the heavens and the earth you know there was darkness upon the face of the earth but he didn't look at the darkness and said how dark is the darkness if he said that the darkness would become far darker but he said let there be light and there was so he put in solution he says nevertheless death reigned from adam to who to moses now uh, those who know that it was moses who brought the law and knew that the law exposed sin and sin brought death come on you must look carefully at what Romans 5 verse 14 says nevertheless death reigned death what reigned from what from Adam to Moses not from Adam to now All right, you want that soak a little bit. That didn't rain from Adam until now. It rained from Adam to Moses. Why is it to Moses? Because Moses was the lawgiver. <laughs> and the law, it was that exposed the sinful nature and sin to men. Because Paul said, if there wasn't a law said, you should not covet. How would he sin by coveting? How would he know he shouldn't covet? Come on. If there's a law, not a law that says, thou shalt not steal, how should he know he shouldn't steal? Come on. He says, there's a command. There's a what? A command, a law that is even pertaining to it. Come on hallelujah so so the law exposes sin but it also condemns it and the one who bears it is in the line of condemnation the law is therefore ministering condemnation and death what is the law ministering condemnation and death and i'm going to show you that in a few moments I want it to just bear with me and get it from the word, not just from my mouth, but read it for yourself. Praise God. Are you there? It says, but the free gift, huh? Romans 5 verse 15. But the free gift is not like the offense. For by one man's offense, many died. Much more the grace of God and the gift of God of the one man. Come on. He's not speaking of the same man. Hallelujah. One man is speaking of through which the offense came is Adam. The other man who is speaking of through which the grace of God come is Christ. Come on now. And he says much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man Jesus Christ abound to many and the gift is not like that 
which came through the one who sinned. Come on, mark that verse. Romans 5 verse 16. The gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. Now there is a life you receive through the one who sinned. <laughs> and that is mortal life. <laughs> you were born of the flesh. And it's mortal life. Because he being severed from the spirit. And reproducing. Is only reproducing. In the flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when God made him before he sinned. And said reproduce. He had the spirit. To reproduce. Not just flesh. My God. What flesh and spirit. God, the word was being delivered to him in the time that the Lord came down in the cool of the day to speak with him. Deposits were being made. But he had not fully mature in what God was telling him. Satan, seeing the opportunity, came forward and made a temptation to the woman and told her, this fruit will not kill you. You will not surely die. God knows when you eat it, you will become as gods and wives. Come on. In other words, God is keeping back something from you that's going to make you powerful. Come on. And Eve swayed to take it. The word didn't say much about Adam hearing anything from the serpent. But the word did say it was Eve who was tempted. Correct. And the, the word does state that when she took and ate it, she gave it to the man who was with her. So he saw when she took it. He saw where she took it from. He saw when she ate it. And he ate it with her. Ah, Jesus. That's why the word of God says Eve was deceived but Adam sinned. Eve was deceived but Adam sinned because the word that was given not to eat from that tree was not given to Eve. It was given to Adam and then Adam spoke it to Eve that came after. Come on, somebody. He had direct revelation of what God told him concerning this. And he now had to relate to the woman who was now with him, his wife. Come on. And he relayed it to her. Some question rose. How do we know that? Because her answer to the servant shows that she had other answers different from what God said to Adam. Hallelujah. Did you note that? It's good for you to check it, the account in Genesis 3 and revise it and study. What did the Lord say to Adam? Hallelujah. What did the Lord say to Adam? And what did Eve respond in saying that the Lord said about the tree to the serpent? Compare the two verses and you'll see something is added. The woman said to the serpent in Genesis 3 verse 3, God had said, you shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. God didn't speak to Adam about anything about touching it. But God did speak to Adam that they should not eat of it. It is obvious then that Eve was not content just to hear that she shouldn't eat of it. But wanted to know what else could we do with it. If we're not to eat it, can we then touch it? Curiosity. And he said to her, no, not even to touch it. Something is added. And I want to tell somebody something on that that you might have missed. To bring you in scope with why I bring up that point. 
that any time the word of God is declared and you need something to be added to cooperate with it you are not satisfied with the word of God and that's why the devil didn't go to tempt Adam on it he's tempting the one <laughs> whose curiosity uh, come on now whose desire is still brewing for something God has forbidden because anything you want to know more about come on now and to have more contact with see how close you can get to it without breaking it you are weak towards it and the devil is not coming to tempt you on things you are strong about Ah, oh, Jesus but he's going to tempt you on things you are weak towards come on now things that you desire hallelujah things that you what desire so your desires can either lead you to good or to evil you can shift what you desire you can turn your heart away from something or your mind away from something that you are craving hello now it is serious here because the word of God said it in James 1 verse 13 I think it says that let no one say when he's tempted I am tempted of God for God doesn't tempt anyone with sin now some say that God put it there to tempt him no God didn't put it there to tempt him <laughs> God didn't put it there to tempt him it was the devil who tempted him hallelujah he says let no one say when he's tempted I am tempted by God for God cannot be tempted by evil nor does he himself tempt anyone come on now I know the word of God says that very clearly doesn't it says it very clearly and yet still some people will say but you know the word of God says God tempt Abraham no he did not tempt Abraham come on tempt tempt is implying a seduction to do something that is below the bar something immoral I, you can't be tempted when we say I'm tempting you to do good you ever heard that you ever heard anybody say they are tempted to do good no but you hear they say I'm tempted to do evil come on now so it tests a test demands for you to raise the bar but temptation requires for you to lower it my god my god my god and you need to know the difference between a temptation and a test come on when teacher gives you a test in class she's not tempting you <laughs> hello somebody so you got to know but if you're not satisfied with what the word of God says you're going to look for other excuse come on now you should not tempt people to do evil you should not tempt people to do evil you should not provoke them to wrath you should not push them to drop their standards hello somebody you should not push them to do things that are evil and he says that's not godly you got that one because God doesn't do that and anything that is godly is like God hallelujah when the woman 
gave Adam when the woman gave Adam the fruit to eat that she ate it was not a temptation my God it was a test my God because there was no one there before to give it to him he never took it my God but God said it is not good for you to be alone <laughs> you see you can't prove some people when them by themselves they need some company and company Abba we have showing up some things within the heart oh my God my God my God I said company Abba we have what showing up some things in the heart if a man sit by himself any man sitting by himself can look very well behaved can look very moral and very sensible very intelligent until he gets some company come on somebody so the, the problem is not the company because there's a reason why God placed him there first there's a reason why God allowed him to exist in that environment by himself with him before giving him company. Because when he was there, he was not there without God. So he was not really alone. But there was none like his kind in the earth. <laughs> Come on somebody. And, he, and the Lord said, I'm going to make up a, a help meet for him. One suitable, a suitable partner for him. Come on. To carry out his duty. Because if he's going to be fruitful and multiply, he's going to need a partner. Hallelujah. Because no man now fruitful by himself. Mm -mm. And not going to multiply by himself neither. You can sell that note to the homosexuals for me. Not going to multiply by themselves. We can put all the homosexuals, if you want them to stop living, we just put them on an island by themselves. And nobody there will ever do anything prejudice against them. And they just fade out. Because they cannot multiply by themselves. Praise God. So what they call us straight straight they call us yeah straight straight multiply <laughs> let me give you a clue straight multiply but the crooked uh, uh, something in the crook of the crook head that not multiplying amen and god have a reason why <laughs> oh you got to love me i love you too you think I hate you? I don't hate you. I just wanted to know the truth. Truth will help you even if you don't like it. Truth will help you. Praise God. You don't have to like me to hear the truth. And if you hear the truth, whether you like me or not, it's going to help you. Even if I didn't want it to help you and I tell you the truth and I use the truth, it's still going to help you. And that's the truth. So I wanted to know the truth. So he says, it, 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 there was a wife given to him, a woman. It was another man. Praise God. Praise God for that. Because if it was another man, I wouldn't be here. Hallelujah. Neither with you. So you better be glad for man and woman. And those man and woman relationships that you say you don't have to go in that course. You better be glad for it because it put you here. Hallelujah. So he says that the life that came by the man. The what? The life that came by the man is not the same life that came by Christ. Lord Jesus. Come on, roll it back to Romans chapter 5. Let me put it together for them. 
Roll it back to Romans chapter 5. Glory to God. He want to put it together but that he can understand this thing. So when man sinned, he sinned in the flesh. My God. And he's reproducing in the flesh human beings that are sinful. Correct? Hallelujah. Good, good. He's reproducing children in the flesh that are but Christ didn't come with a life like the life you receive. The life you receive from Adam is corruptible. My God. It is mortal life. But he's come to give you eternal life. It's not the same kind of life. Come on now. It's a different kind of life. An everlasting or eternal life is not just a ever going on life. But he's talking about the kind of life. That kind of life is not the life man you receive from man. Oh, come on now. Now look at what it says in Romans 5 verse 16. It says the gift is not like that which came from the one who sinned. The one who sinned gave us life, you know. Correct? Yes. Anybody said the one who sinned didn't give them life. Obviously, they don't recognize that they born. Because if you don't born, you can't born again. Yes, so you have to born. <laughs> so life was given to you. But he said that life you receive is not this life that this one come to give you now. He says for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in what? Condemnation. Condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in what? Justification means righteousness. Whoa. It means being made right. Uh, don't no pun intended, but it's still straight. It means being made straight. No, I, I, I'm not changing the meaning. It's that what it means. Look at the dictionary. It means being made straight. When a thing is crooked, and they say they justify it, they get it back in line. So that's what it means, being made straight. So we know sin come and cause a lot of uh, crookedness, crooked, crookedness. <laughs> but the word of God come to get something straight. That crooked. Hallelujah. So he, <laughs> he said, <laughs> you got to get the word. Because you can't live by bread alone. But you live by what? Every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. So he says that the sin that came brought condemnation. Huh? But the life that this righteous man came with brought justification. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look what it says in verse 18. Therefore as through one man's offense, judgment came to all, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act. The free gift came to all men, resulting in what? Justification of life. So we understand some people's life crooked. But he said he want to make it straight again. We understand that all have been born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but you can be born again. And this is not born from the sinful roots. This is being born of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So it says in verse 19, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. Look at that. So also by one man's obedience many will be made straight hallelujah righteous and that's something for you to consider for you telling everybody we all sinners you are not accepting what Jesus came here to do remember the word of God says sin reigned from Adam to Moses but from Christ the gift that was given 
given us power over sin given us power over satan given us power over death my god given us power over our sinful nature because he gave us the holy spirit and he says in romans 8 verse 2 the law of the spirit of life in christ has set me free from the law of sin and death the law of sin and death is your sinful nature is something that make you naturally a law is something that operate naturally to sway things in a certain direction consistently and he says the sinful nature always sway you to sin but he says the spirit of god the law of the spirit of life in god in christ this is the holy spirit he says it sways you to righteousness come on now it sways you naturally to but you can't say I'm operating under both the law. It's either under one or the other. Hello. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Now we wanted to show you that sin brought condemnation. And the law is ministering. is a ministry of condemnation and, and death. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Think verse 7 going down. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 3 verse 7 says, But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance which was passing the glory was passing away. How will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious? More glorious. Hello. What was written and engraved on stones? The law. Specifically the Ten Commandments. And he calls it the ministry of death. Now all those law preachers and all those people who have been saying they've been under the law because that's where the Lord wants all of us sinners to be. That's true. You need to be under the law, all you sinners. But those who have been made right, he says, have been justified in Christ. He says, been made righteous. They are not under the law. They're under grace. Watch your thing. And he says that grace has not made them lawless. They are now operating by a different law called the law of the spirit. And that's what he says in Romans 8 verse 2. The law of the spirit of life in Christ has set me free. From the law of sin and death. Now look what he calls it. The ministry of death. In 2 Corinthians 3 verse 7. That's what he calls the law. And calls the ministry of grace. The ministry of the spirit. And says the ministry of the spirit. Is far more glorious. Than the ministry. Of death. Come on now. Verse 9. Verse 9 going down. Don't give me verse I read already. It says, For if the ministry of condemnation, if the ministry of what? If the ministry of condemnation had glory, so he not only called it the ministry of death, he called the law the ministry of condemnation. You see why the law points you to Christ? You see why the law cannot save you? Because its work is not to save you. Watch the thing. It says the ministry. If the ministry of condemnation had glory. Past tense. Had glory. The ministry of righteousness. Come on. Exceeds much more. In glory. 
Come on now. I didn't write the book. I'm only preaching it. And it's the truth. And you need to agree with the truth if it's it you say defending. Because you said you believe in the book. Now believe what it is saying. It says for even what was made glorious. That was made glorious was the law that came to them from Moses. That he even was glorious shining on his face. That he had to wear a veil over his face. He says nevertheless with all of that glory. That glory and Moses was fading. And it soon went away. And they didn't even see when it went away. Because the veil was covering it. That only when Moses took it off, they knew it was gone. But when it was gone, they didn't know. And Paul was speaking about this. That in the same manner, the people have not seen that the glory has left the law. They're still hanging on to it. That glory has faded and gone. The glory that come is not fading. The glory that come, he says, is exceeding. Meaning it's getting brighter and brighter. It's not fading like the glory on Moses' face. Come on, somebody. He said it in verse 10. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. Come on. For if what is passing away was glorious, that's the law and the glory, what remains, that's Christ, is much more glorious. Come on now. That's why I ask one of my law brethren, which one is greater? Christ or the law? And of course, anybody who know Christ will say Christ. And I'll say to them then, if it is Christ that you are serving, how are you breaking the lesser? If you are serving the greater, it covers the lesser. You don't need the lesser to tutor you when you're under the greater. Lord Jesus. Come on. If a principal is at a school and the principal have learned the whole curriculum from grade 1 to grade 6 and can teach any child in that school from grade 1 to grade 6, you don't need a grade 1 teacher. If you are studying with the principal, you don't need a grade 1 teacher because the grade 1 teacher only can carry you through grade 1. And you're going to need another teacher to carry to grade two. But the principal know all the grades. My God. So he's saying then, if one is greater there, why are you striving for the lesser? Woo! Come on, somebody. I didn't write it. I'm not preaching it. And it declares there that some greater came. Jesus didn't just die on the cross for us to say our sins are forgiven. He gave us his spirit. Come on now. Romans 8 said anyone that have not the spirit of Christ is none of his. Come on. And he tells you that spirit is necessary because we are the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty and who the son set free. Is free indeed. We don't use this liberty to sin and say we are free because it is sin that put us in bondage in the first place. But now, being led by the Holy Spirit, we don't need to go back to the law because those who are under the law were not filled with the Holy Spirit. So first Timothy 1. Verse 8 to 9. First Timothy 1 verse 8 to 9. Tells us who the law is for. He says we know that the law is good. We know that the law is what? It is good if it is used what? Lawfully. Knowing this that the law is not made. For a righteous person. 
Now, is there none righteous? Of course there is. Because he told you that in Christ you have been made righteous. That's why Christ is the end of the law. End doesn't mean that he abolishes it. But end means that you don't continue under the law in Christ. You understand that? Because he comes to give grace. Ah. But who does he give grace to? The humble. Come on. Those who are seeking righteousness of the law are seeking self-praise. They are the ones who will be praying like that Pharisee in the temple and saying, you know, I pay tithe and I'm not like the fornicator. Come on now. Huh? And I and I and I pr come to the synagogue and I keep Sabbath day. Hello, somebody. And he says, Did the Lord hear that prayer? No. Because when you're trying to be justified by the works of the law, there's a self-righteousness that takes over. And it's not the righteousness of God that you have access by faith. Because then you would know it's not earn I earn the righteousness because of my good works. But it has been given to me as a gift. And because I received that new position as a gift, I put it to work to show that I got it. So I use, I receive it as a gift to show it, but I don't work to get it. That's the error that the Jews did. They were working for a salvation through the law. And he says, they didn't find that righteousness nor salvation through the law. But those he said who was not looking it for through the law found it in Christ. Paul wrote about that and said we should pray for the Jews because this portion of blindness that have come upon them has, has come upon them for a season till the fullness of the Gentiles be brought in. Come on somebody. And the Gentiles are coming in through faith in the Lord they are being born of the spirit born of the water born of God not because of their great works that they have done but their faith in the Lord and commitment to Christ have birthed this in them hello somebody it is the work of God being perfected in them hallelujah but he says the law is for the unrighteous, the lawless, insubordinate, ungodly, sinners, unholy, profane, murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, manslayers. Huh? My God. And there are more. Fornicators are sodomites. Oh, the crooked one, them. S uh, kidnappers for liars, for perjurers. And if there's any other thing. That is contrary to sound doctrine. He says that's who the law is for. That's who the law is for. When he said if there's any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. He says those are who the law is for. And who made us know that was what the law is for? He says that is according to the glorious gospel. Of the blessed God which I was committed to my trust. So Paul said to Timothy, the gospel that Christ committed to him, tell him that is what the law is for. And those who preach in the gospel are not preaching, that is lying to the people. Preaching the law as the gospel is not truth. The law is not the gospel. The gospel preaches that that is what the law is for. And the gospel teaches, how do you then live under grace? Because the gospel releases grace. But the law releases condemnation. Death. Come on, somebody. That, that's not what the law, the gospel is about. Hello. Anyone who believes on the gospel will be saved. Believing on the law don't save you. 
Come on. Believe in the Lord. Say because it says, by observing the law, no flesh should be justified in the sight of the Lord. By the law. Because he said if justification came by the law, then Christ dying would be in vain. That's why we're here on a good Friday today. Looking at what that death meant to us. And some have trivialized the death of Christ as just something to pardon sin. They don't see it as a means of removing sin from their DNA. Removing sin from their lives. It's not just forgiving you. It is cleansing you. From all unrighteousness. Come on somebody. And if it's cleansing you from all unrighteousness, any unrighteousness left? No. It makes you righteous. He says, just the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all unrighteousness. Come on. And he says, the Holy Spirit now gives you the very nature of God. When an evil spirit is in you, it, it forces you and compels you to do evil things. When Holy Spirit is in you, what does it do? It compels you to do good things. So it, there's something to offset that nature. And it says the nature that you receive from Christ is greater than the nature you receive from fallen Adam. That's why I say, it's not like that you receive from the one who sinned. The gift you receive from the one who sinned is not the same as the gift you receive from the one who is righteous. Glory to God. He's talking of a different life. So many don't know that life. Yeah. All they see in the cross is death. But they don't understand the cross. Is a symbol of victory over death itself. It is a testimony of the resurrection. It's not just to speak about death. Christ had to taste of death that we could taste of his life. Come on, somebody. Christ had to what? Yes, the word of God said it in Hebrews 2 verse 10. Hallelujah. He said that he is bringing many sons to glory. And that he himself had to become like us. In his suffering he was made perfect. Because he had to taste of death. Look at it. He says for it is fitting for him. For whom are all things and by whom are all things. In bringing many sons to glory. To make the captain of their salvation. Which is Christ. Perfect through what? sufferings amen and for both he who sanctifies uh, and those who are being sanctified are all of one for which reason is not ashamed to call them what brethren imagine Christ the son of God God that become flesh and dwell among us Calling you brothers and sisters. Uh, brothers and sisters of God. Hallelujah. That sounds good to me. If you don't want to, you can't turn it. I want that. And you can't tell me I'm being proud for wanted because he made the offer. And he says, whosoever will, let him come, no sir. And I will. Hallelujah. You can stay to the thing both if you will. He said, I will declare your name to my brethren. And in the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. Hallelujah. And again, I will trust. I put my trust in him. And again, he will say what? Here I am and the children whom God has given me. In, so verse 14 is what I'm looking for. Verse 14 and 15. He says, In as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, in as much then as what? The children, those children, is talking about us who have been given to him as children from God. 
He says, if the children are spied, taken of what? Flesh and blood. The children are not flesh and blood. But he said they partake of flesh and blood. Means that that's the body they partake of. He himself also partook of that body. Look at that. He says he himself likewise shared in the same. He's not the body. He's not flesh and blood. But he, he came and dwelt among us in that flesh and blood. He said, became flesh. Hallelujah. And he says, he says, shared in the same that through death, through what? Death, he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is who? That is the devil. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Come on, somebody. Look at the victory that we have in Christ. He didn't just come and just say, your sins are forgiven. You're excused. No. He said, I'm giving to you a new life. And this life is eternal life. Any man who believes in the Son will heed to his word. Anyone who rejects the Son will be condemned. Come on somebody. John 3 verse 18 to 19. Jesus said it that the son didn't come to condemn those that are in the world. Come on. But at the world through them it might be saved. But he says how are they condemned? He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is what? Condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God is one son. The God spoke from heaven and men heard and said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm pleased. And it's Jesus. Not Selassie. Not Buddha. Not Allah. Come on. Not no Hindu God. Elephant God. Rock God. River God. Yeah, moon God. Sun God. No, no, no. He says, this is the one they heard the voice spoke from heaven like thunder. And when thunder roaring in the sky, it's not one person hear it. This is the one he announced from heaven. This is the one. My son in whom I'm well pleased. Praise God. And he said, he who believes in him will not be condemned hello but he who believes not in him is what condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God and he says and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love what darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. He says, anyone who loved the light, come to the light. That their deeds will be revealed. That it is of God. But those that hate the light, they don't come to the light. Come on. Because they don't want their deeds to be exposed. Come on now. But God is calling you. So you got to make sure that your work is done indeed. In the work of the Lord. What you say? Come on now. So no one can say I have that life from God. And reject the son. Because anyone who rejects the son. Rejects the father also. Is one come to give you life. One come to qualify you. To come into the family of God. And is the son of God. This is not Christianity. This is Christ. It's not religion. It is salvation. When your house is on fire and firemen come and break down that door and pull off those bars and get you out of your unconscious state out of that house and take your possessions out and out that fire. You didn't experience religion. You experienced salvation. Your life and your property has been saved. Come on. 
that is salvation we don't put up a flag there and a tower there and say this is religion no house burning religion no so that's what they made a religion of Christ that they call Christianity but don't get Christianity confused with Christ you better know that because it's not Christianity that saved you Christianity did not die on the cross was not raised again on the third day did not ascend into heaven and seated at the right hand of God it is Christ and there is one savior of the world that came to pay the penalty for the sins of men all the religions that are in the world has no solution to sin Christ is the answer John saw that one who was sitting on the throne opened a book that had seven seals when he was caught up in heaven and he says there was a seal there that angels cried out and said who is able to open that book come on I believe it's Revelation 4 so he says who is able to open that book and to open those seven seals praise God and he says there is none found worthy to open it and John began to weep why was John weeping because those seven seals would speak of the deliverance of men and if there's no deliverance man's fate is sealed to destruction and John began to weep and the elder touched John and said John don't weep behold the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world come on he saw one as a lamb that was slain come on and he took the scroll out of him that sat on the throne it's Revelation 5 praise God he took the scroll out of the one who was sitting on the throne and he opened, sat down and opened the seal and he says the 24 elders threw off their crown and bow angels bowed down before him and worshipped him and cried out worthy is the lamb that was slain come on somebody to redeem mankind blessing and honor and glory and power and dominion and praise be unto him come on somebody the elders said to me do not weep behold a lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seal and I hear some people say that Selassie Selassie died for anything but Selassie did tell you that he worshipped Jesus as his Lord and Savior he did tell you and even if you never heard him say it is the crown that he wears has a cross on it the crown that they crown him Lord of Lord in has cross on the two shoulders of that crown. It was ordained by an Ethiopian Orthodox Church that is a Christian church. How did that message reach over in Ethiopia? In Acts chapter 8, Philip spoke to that Ethiopian eunuch and shared with him the gospel of Christ when he was reading the book of Isaiah. And the Ethiopian eunuch said to Philip, Here is water, what prevents me from being baptized? And he was baptized. That gospel went into Ethiopia. And that's written in Acts chapter 8. And now the church in Ethiopia was where Selassie went to. You need to study your history. And know what you're doing in that regard. Because even he confessed Christ. So if you honor Selassie, honor Silas is Lord because he declared that Jesus Christ is his Lord and even David declared Jesus Christ as Lord so even if you want to say one who come from David the Lord himself said to the Pharisees why do you call the Christ David's son he said if David call him Lord how can he be his son come on and they couldn't answer him another word because their teaching is crooked just like yours but if you seek the Lord you will come to truth be justified, be made right 
straight with him. He's bringing you into that fullness through the word of God. Come on, somebody. So he didn't die just for you to say, thank God him dead so we don't have to pay for sin anymore. It's the end of sin. And now it's the life of righteousness. Come on now. He said it in Romans chapter 6. I believe from verse 18. Hallelujah. He says don't, don't be slaves. Slaves anymore to sin. But be slaves to God. Don't be slaves to sin. But be slaves to God. Come on now. He says having been set free from sin. You became slaves of what? Righteousness. I was sharing part of the scripture with a sister since morning. And sharing with her that, you know, we don't hear following up ear texture and eye color and skin color. And, and your, 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 your roots to know whether you're black or you're, you're white and Chinese or Indian and your African or what was your language, what was your clothes, what was your food you eat, what was your you will find yourself. Hello, somebody. We don't preach that kind of gospel. That's not even our gospel, it's corrupt and perverted. And lead people into racism. Because every man and woman on the face of the earth come from Adam and Eve. So all the race them you're trying to divide, they come from one man. Adam and Eve. Right, so all the race you're dividing, I want to know your race. You need to know it's Jesus' race you must line up in. Because that's the new creation race. Right. Hello, somebody. And it, it, it said there that you really, I said to her, you know, slavery. Slavery. Why you never hear Jesus preach against slavery and slavery was there? Slavery was not really the problem, you know. The real problem was who they were enslaved to. <laughs> I'll give you something to think about today. Slavery was never really the problem. The problem was who they were enslaved to. You're hearing what I'm saying. Because there are slaves who served to pay their debts. And once the debt is paid, they are free to go. And those slaves would have a piercing in one of their ears to show that they had served to complete their payment. Now when they had finished that payment, they were free to go now and become free men back in society. But there are slaves who pierce their other ear. You know, for the men them that have them both ears pierced, you need to understand something. <laughs> it's not fashion, it's not something just happened another day. It's actually written in the scripture. <laughs> and so it says, when they were slaves that love all this master treated them and decided they didn't want to leave that master, they would pierce the other ear. In other words, they didn't feel like slaves. With those masters. They didn't feel like slaves. The way they were treated. Because the real issue. Is not so much. Who is slave. And who is free. The real issue is sin. Sin is what make a person. Treat someone else like dirt. Abuse them and misuse them and despise them and degrade them and demoralize them and do inhumane things to them. Sin! And that's why Jesus said it. Everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. Come on. Are you looking this word here? Having been, give me some scripture up earlier. Think probably from verse 16 or 14. You'll see some about not being slaves of sin, but slaves of God. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Which verse is that? All right, let's start from verse 16. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. So it says, you are that person's what? That person's slave. You see that? You are that one slave whom you obey. He never gets rid of slavery. You just like you change your master. Look, look at it. He says, You are that slave whom you obey, whether of sin. So he's talk about sin, being a slave master, you know, leading to death. Our obedience, obedience to who? Obedience to the Lord. Leading to righteousness but thanks be to god through that that though you were slaves of sin yet you obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine to which you are delivered and having been set free from sin you became what it's still talk about you being a slave but to a different leadership look at it again verse 19 going down it says i speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh for just as you present your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness so now present your members as what slaves of righteousness for holiness for when you were slaves of sin you were free in regard to righteousness in other words when you were serving sin you had no obligation to christ nor to what christ bring righteousness now for holiness. But he says, the same way you present yourself, he says, you present yourself to sin as a slave. He said, present yourself to righteousness for holiness. You got it? He says, what fruit did you have then in the things which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things you did is death. It results in that separation from God. Hello. You got this. God is calling you to something deeper here. And you got to push beyond common knowledge. And get deep in the word. Hello somebody. Because God has something greater in store for you. And you can't miss it because of bad mind people. Hello. People who have no, not your, your best interests at heart. Just want you feel good even when you're doing bad. That's not good friendship. Come on. A good friend will make you feel bad about something bad because they want you to be good. But it's not good friend to have people around you that always make you not feel good no matter what you do. That's not no good friend. You need to choose some good friends. And there's no good friend without God. Because God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we want you to align yourself in the word. And know that Christ died for you to have eternal life. A new covenant was being established. And it says the testator of the will. There was necessity of the testator's death. If the testator don't die. The new will cannot be enforced. So under the old will or the old covenant, we were under the law. Under the new covenant, we are under grace through Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. And so since the, 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 the old new have been established, the priesthood has changed. Therefore, the law has changed. Because the priests have changed. That is in Hebrews chapter 7. We won't go into it now. Our time is up. But we want to raise your expectancy and your faith in the word. Come on somebody. You got to know that God did something awesome for us through Christ. And you need to acknowledge and appreciate what he done. By surrendering. Giving your all to him. And, and allow him. To lead you in all ways of truth, righteousness, and holiness. 
For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it is what? Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on, lift those hands to Jesus. Let's worship him in this place. By his stripes we are here. By his nail pierced hands we're free. Come on. By his blood we're was clear. Now we have the fear for
the anointing. God wants to save you right now. He wants to deliver you right now. He didn't die for you to have a pity party. He died for you to have a resurrection. He died for you to have a great salvation. He died for you to obtain and inherit a kingdom that he has reserved for you. Hallelujah. It's not time to be thinking about it. It's time to be focusing on that life that God is offering because he says the gift you receive from the one who sinned cannot be compared to the gift you receive from the one who rose again who released grace and power life and strength healing and redemption hey! salvation and restoration into your life right now no matter how dark it seems No matter how hard it seems God still want to raise you up Look what he did to his body Look what he did to his friend Look how the curse on his name Yes, still alive his hand on it his grace is sufficient even my weakness his strength is made perfect come on somebody somebody give him a praise right we you are just gotta worship him disarm every agents of hell to disarm every depression and distress doubt and fear that has weighed upon your false weights and burdens we break them off your shoulder we lose you from all those dead clothes from all that clothes of depression and disappointment frustration and anxiety we release ya. We lose ya. We lose ya. We lose ya. In the almighty power of God, be set free right now. Be set free right now. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Worship him in this place. Now somebody that believes they've been set free. Give God a prize. You pray that what they look at. You pray for what they say. They know what you're going through. They know what God did for you. You need to tell it.
rooted up. Something, something, something. speaking over your life and start to agree with the promises of God reach out and receive it by faith and count it done in the name of Jesus come on wave those hands and thank you come on bodies are being healed right now check yourself fire is moving in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear the chains falling. Ha -ha. I see things shifting in the atmosphere. My God, the angel goes swarming around you. Ministering to your healing and deliverance. Healing is your Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know that He touched and delivered. The point is, do you believe it? Are you going to let the devil rob you of the victories and the place that God has positioned you in right now because of doubts and fears? anxiety and depression clouding your vision and you are allowing it to rule over your life to bring you into a dark place I'm saying you can come out you can't wait on the things to change around you you gotta make that decision now inside God works inside out come on receive him and embrace him right now and he's gonna do it all I believe it's being done right now somebody thank him right now come on exercise your faith and just say thank you Lord thank you Lord
They don't know what you've been through. They're wondering what all is shouting about. Mm -hmm. They're wondering what all is nice about. I made it through I made it through The night seems so long The fears were so strong But I made it through You don't know what I know what I made Just gotta stop and pray. Lord, for those who are here and those who are watching who have been through a great ordeal in their life and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is you that brought them through. You that did it then is more than able to do it now. And I pray that they will not lose heart they will not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, they will reap if they faint not. You are that same God yesterday, today, and forever. Your mercy endure it forever. Your truth endure it to all generations. And whosoever mix your word with faith, will get the same result bringing glory and honor to your precious name we pray that their faith will be strengthened that their hearts will be enlarged to receive more from you in the name of Jesus increase their capacity to receive more and cause them to drink from that water that never run dry Refresh their innermost being. Renew their strength and their frame. And cause them to stand victorious in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, give him the praise one more time in the house. Praise God. We're going to release and our time is up. But we are not up with the gospel. We are still going on. Hallelujah. But we got to disconnect from this broadcast now. Praise God. Give you a chance to sow to this ministry. Those who want to sow to this ministry can do so. It's fertile soil. It's, you can, anyone who watch this ministry can know the Spirit of the Lord is moving mightily in this house and through this ministry. And we want you to connect with that. It's not so much with us. It's with where the Spirit of the Lord is. There's liberty and there's release. There's an anointing and breakthrough. Praise God. And so we pray that as you connect, you will see the change, the shifting taking place. And know that this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in your eyes. And you can run and tell somebody else. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Praise God. So if you want to sow to this message, you can sow through our website. It's Increase in Faith intl.org increasing faith intl.org you can write your prayer request in the comment box or your praise report how this ministry been blessed and rejoice to hear from you we have been rejoicing the many reports we have been received of changes and miracles and shifts that have been taking place in the lives of the people who are connecting with us through faith and we know with faith hallelujah without faith is impossible to please god but with faith the impossible becomes possible 
Hallelujah. Because with God all things are possible. And he says, how do you get faith? By hearing. And hearing the word of God. So be free to sow to this ministry. If you want to ask any other question about this ministry or contact us. You can call me Richard Fagan at 876-839-9390 or 557-2427. Look forward to hearing from you as we connect in the word and in the gospel of Christ. I believe faith with faith and the anointing and grace will always cause a mega response and glorious one to the name of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So until next time, be strong in the Lord the power of his might so may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord of his countenance upon you and give you his peace god bless you have a great week the lord love you all blessings